much for joining me for today's webinar, Medication Adherence, On Track with Your Meds and Your Health. I'm Carla, the Director of Education and Partnerships at NeedyMed. Before we begin, I'll offer a few tips so you can make the most out of today's presentation. You can ask questions by typing them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel, but no, I will reserve answering questions until the end. If I don't get a chance to answer your question, I will follow up with you by email. I'll provide my contact information and the contact information for Needy Meds at the end. My PowerPoint slide deck and other attachments I thought attendees might be interested in are in that handout section of your control panel. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel. With this presentation, I'm going to cover what Needy Meds, DMedWise, and Talk About Your Medicines Month are, what exactly is medication adherence, and why is it so important for your health? There are reasons medication adherence can be challenging. We'll talk about what those challenges or barriers are, as well as tips and advice from experts on how to overcome them. And we'll cover what role patients and their providers can play in making medication adherence a priority. A disclaimer, I'm not a healthcare professional or medication adherence expert. I'm a Needy Meds team member showcasing information we have vetted and included on talkaboutyourmedicines.org. I will direct you to the site for more information and stress reaching out to your healthcare provider with any questions. So let's begin with what is Needy Meds. Needy Meds is a national nonprofit co-founded more than two decades ago by a retired family physician, Dr. Richard Sagel, and his friend, Libby Overly, who was a medical social worker. Rich is still the president. What you're looking at is our mission statement, a statement about how we achieved that mission, and our vision statement. But simply put, Needy Meds connects people to programs that will help them afford their healthcare expenses. And we do that free and anonymously through our website, needymeds.org, and a helpline, 1-800-503-6897. Here's a screenshot of our homepage of our website. As you can see, it's full of information, so I encourage you to check it out further. For now, I'd like to point out just a few resources. Since I just mentioned our YouTube channel, you can find a link to it on the top right where all of our social media icons are. If you're looking for healthcare savings, check out that patient savings tab. You can find educational information under the advocates tab where you'll find a link to BMedWise and you'll also see a link to BMedWise on the left side of the homepage as well. So what is BMedWise? On your screen is the BMedWise mission statement, a statement about how we achieved that mission, and the vision statement. BMedWise is a Needy Meds project and website. On BMedWise.org, you can find accurate, up-to-date, and useful information on the safe and appropriate use of medicines, safe storage of medicines, and the safe disposal of unused medicines. You're looking at a screenshot of the BMedWise site. Like NeedyMeds.org, it's full of information, so please check it out further, because today we're focusing on one specific initiative. Under the Get Informed tab, a drop-down menu will appear. This is where you will find a link to talk about your medicines month. Or you can go directly to the website, talkaboutyourmedicines.org. The BMedWise annual Talk About Your Medicines Month spotlights important healthcare issues. The goal is better health outcomes through education and improved communication. On the screen right now are just a handful of some popular Talk About Your Medicines Month themes from previous years. 2020 is the 35th anniversary for Talk About Your Medicines Month, and the theme is medication adherence. With so much information available online, it can be overwhelming and difficult to find reliable information. With the Talk About Your Medicines initiative, we provide the most comprehensive and up-to-date information on medication adherence and break the information into small, understandable, and actionable categories. 
we've created a one-stop destination for everything you need to know about medication adherence on talkaboutyourmedicines.org. So let's get started with what is medication adherence. Medication adherence, which has been called America's other drug problem, is a patient's ability to accurately follow a prescribed treatment regimen. It means taking medication as prescribed by your doctors. This can actually involve a number of steps for the patient, such as getting prescriptions filled, remembering to take medication on time, and understanding the directions. Being successful with medication adherence means the patient has the tools they need to take their meds as prescribed. Knowledge about the medication, the motivation to stay on track, and the skills and resources needed to follow the prescription and healthcare provider's instructions. On the other hand, non-adherence can include delaying or not filling a prescription, skipping doses, splitting pills, or stopping a medication early. So what happens when a patient does not take or is not able to take their medications as prescribed? Well, there's strong evidence that medication non-adherence is linked to poor health outcomes. I think the quote on the screen really sums it up. There's an out of control epidemic that affects more people than any disease Americans currently worry about. It's called non-adherence. And the statistics we found are shocking. Studies have shown that approximately 50% of patients do not take their chronic meds as prescribed. Poor medication adherence is linked to approximately 125,000 deaths a year in the United States. Between 100 and $300 billion of avoidable healthcare costs have been attributed to non-adherence in the U.S. annually. That represents 3 to 10% of total U.S. healthcare costs. So let's talk about this in more concrete terms. Non-adherence, which can be intentional or unintentional, can lead to disease progression, disease complications, reduced functional abilities, and preventable death. Non-adherence to cardiovascular drugs, for example, results in a doubling of the rates of death and cardiovascular-related hospitalizations. Diabetic patients who do not take prescribed meds properly have poor blood sugar control, higher blood pressure, and elevated cholesterol. And patients with mental illness are more likely to experience major depressive or destructive episodes. So why don't people adhere to their medication schedule and instructions? Another way of asking that is, what are common medication adherence barriers? You can find a more thorough list on talkaboutyourmedicines.org, but I'm going to point out four of the most common. You won't be surprised that cost is right at the top of the list. The cost of prescriptions rose 3% from December 2018 to 2019, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index. Per the Kaiser Family Foundation, 29% of American adults report not taking their meds as prescribed at some point in the past year because of the cost. We've learned poverty is a crucial risk factor. In addition to difficulties with affording meds, low quality housing, shift work, and food insecurity are common among low income patients and contribute to medication non-adherence. Complicated drug regimens are also a common obstacle. Patients with multiple chronic conditions often take more medicines, are seen by different prescribers, and often struggle with taking complex combinations of different meds. Nearly 70% of Americans are on at least one prescription drug and more than half take two, Mayo Clinic researchers say. An estimated 20% of Americans take five or more prescriptions. Demographics matter as well. Gender, age, and cultural and religious differences all play a role in medication adherence. Patients might not trust their healthcare providers. They may even have anti-science beliefs rooted in their cultural background. This can affect a person's health and the types of treatments they prefer. And education or lack of about medications is another leading cause of non-adherence. Health literacy plays an important role in patients' understanding of their medication instructions. 
health literacy is the ability to obtain, read, understand, and use healthcare information in order to make appropriate health decisions and follow instructions for treatment. Skepticism can lead patients to believe a prescription isn't necessary or may be harmful, and a distrust of doctors can lead to poorer health outcomes. Healthcare providers can do a lot to ensure their patients are not confused, and patients should not feel hesitant to ask questions if there is something they don't understand. But we'll talk about patients and provider roles later on. For now, let's talk about ways we can overcome these barriers. Now, when it comes to cost, the inability to pay for medications is possibly the biggest barrier to adherence in the US. Some physicians and insurers have started endorsing programs that provide patients with financial incentives to take their meds. Cash incentives have worked for tobacco cessation and weight loss programs, and studies show it may work for prescriptions as well. We also hope you rely on needy meds if you're struggling with your medication or healthcare expenses. You can check out that patient savings tab on needymeds.org to see all of our healthcare savings resources, and you could reach out to our call center at 1-800-503-6897. Moving on, check out talkaboutyourmedicines.org for more information about how to overcome the barrier of complicated drug regimens. With this presentation, I just want to point out two suggested ways. One, have you heard of medication synchronization? That's when the pharmacist coordinates the refill of your medicines so you can pick them up on a single day each month. This eliminates the need to call in multiple prescription refills, allows you the convenience of fewer trips to the pharmacy, and provides an opportunity to meet with your pharmacist on a monthly basis to discuss your medications. Nowadays, there are phone apps for everything, but we actually have a helpful and free medication adherence tool app called Health Storyline. So the second way to make your drug regimen easier that I'm going to talk about is Health Storyline, a free self-care app that makes it easy for you to track and manage your own health conditions and the health conditions of your loved ones. This customizable tool works as a symptom tracker, daily mood tracker, journal, vitals tracker, and more. But most importantly, it can act as your medication reminder. Let me know if you'd like to learn more by sending me a message in that question section, or just go ahead and download it again for free on Google Play or through the iTunes App Store. And remember to check out talkaboutyourmedicines.org for more ways to simplify your drug regimen. So, studies show that patients who are younger, single, members of minority groups, and or immigrants are more likely to be non-adherent to prescribed medications for controlling chronic diseases. Make sure to see a prescriber that understands cultural perspective is paramount to the patient's likelihood, likelihood of following medical advice. And if you're looking for an affordable, convenient provider, check out the Needy Meds listing of more than 18,000 free, low cost, and sliding scale clinics. Like all the other healthcare savings resources, you can find the clinics category under that patient savings tab on needymeds.org. And let's not forget about improving health literacy. Over a third of American adults are estimated to have basic or below basic health literacy. This may result in their inability to read a medicine bottle label or remember the instructions. Yet, adherence hinges on the patient's ability to understand basic health information and understand the consequences of their decisions. Communication is key. Healthcare providers should open the lines of communication with their patients. Creative communication strategies actually help patients improve their health literacy. Likewise, Patients shouldn't hesitate to ask questions or be resistant to new information. When patients better understand their conditions and know the proper way to manage their medication, they are more likely to adhere to treatment regimens and experience better outcomes. Again, we encourage you to visit talkaboutyourmedicines.org to learn about other barriers, such as patients who deliberately do not take their meds if they're in denial about their condition, patients who are afraid of side effects, 
or those who don't take their meds because they think they won't help. For now, we're going to continue talking about communication. The good news is both patients and providers can take steps to make medication adherence a priority, which will lead to better health outcomes, the ultimate goal. We all understand patients are ultimately responsible for taking their medications as prescribed, but as we just covered, there are many factors that affect adherence. Patients may be reluctant to share their intentions to not take their medications and their concerns with their healthcare providers. Other patients apply a trial and error approach to self-adjusting their meds. Patients should be, and this is why it's so important for patients to be an active member of their healthcare team. Being open and communicative ensures that healthcare providers are aware of any concerns patients may have and can address them in ways that encourage medication adherence. Be sure to discuss any concerns of cost or side effects with your healthcare provider or pharmacist right from the beginning. Now, when it comes to the provider's role, the best time to stress the value of medication adherence is when the patient receives the prescription. Patients consider their healthcare providers the most reliable source of information and are therefore more likely to follow treatment plans when the doctor explains them. Yet, research shows there's a communication gap between patients and their healthcare providers when it comes to talking about meds. This communication gap contributes to unnecessary side effects, drug interactions, costly disease complications, and, you guessed it, non-adherence. Healthcare providers should adopt universal practices to help patients take their medications as prescribed. Explaining the value of medicines with their patients can help maximize benefits and minimize risks. Communication can lessen the possibility of a harmful interaction between medicines and foods, beverages, and supplements. It can help the patient recognize and avoid side effects, as well as monitor the medicine's effects. Helping patients build a foundation of knowledge is crucial to ensuring adherence. And if you're a healthcare provider, insist that your patients read and follow the directions on the medicine label and give clear written and verbal instructions describing exactly how each medication should be taken. And do your best to try to help patients overcome the challenge of multiple medications. For patients who take multiple medications, Simplifying the medication regimen can greatly improve adherence. In addition to medication synchronization, healthcare providers can try to simplify the medication regimen by using similarly timed doses and or combination pills when available and minimize the use of different pharmacies. You can find all this information and more about both the patient's and provider's role in medication adherence on talkaboutyourmedicines.org. You will also find pages that specifically provide tips for talking to your pharmacist. Like before you leave the pharmacy, make sure you understand the directions for use and how to measure the dosage correctly, including liquid medications. You'll find a page for tips for talking to your doctor. Like why are you being prescribed this particular medication? No matter what the health condition is, there's usually more than one choice of medication to treat it. Ask if the one your doctor recommends is actually the best choice for you. You'll find a page dedicated to tips for parents. Like, don't refer to medicine as candy. Saying medicine is candy may make it easier to get your child to take medicine, yet it may also encourage them to try it on their own. And you'll also find a page for tips for caregivers. Like, make taking medicines part of a daily routine. For example, if a parent always has a morning cup of tea, leave a reminder by the teacup. Again, all this information and more about medication adherence can be found on talkaboutyourmedicines.org. Don't forget to check out the resources tab. This is where you will find healthcare professional resources, ideas for ways to participate in Talk About Your Medicines Month. You can read more about the Health Storylines Medication Adherence app I talked about it earlier. You will also find our social media toolkit to help spread the word about Talk About Your Medicines Month, as well as a whole page of downloadable resources we're confident you will find super helpful. And for organizations, under the About tab, you can find out how to be a supporter of Talk About Your Medicines Month if your organization is not already, 
and how doing so will benefit your organization. Most importantly, we're hoping you'll answer our call to action, which is visiting Talk About Your Medicines Month, downloading the information, and sharing, sharing, sharing. And please take these steps now because we can't spread the word about this important issue without your help. And we hope you'll agree medication adherence is crucial to the health of everyone. So use the information, tips, and resources for yourself, your loved ones, your clients, your patients, or your constituents. I'm going to take a moment to answer some questions coming in from the audience. And as I get to those questions, I'd like to leave our contact information on the screen. So one of the qu first questions that actually came in a little bit ago was, you talked about how a lot of people use a lot of different medications, but you didn't use the word po polypharmacy. Isn't the use of different medications called polypharmacy? Or is that something else? So that's actually a great question, and I'm really glad an audience member brought that up because, yes, the definition of polypharmacy is the use of multiple medications. I believe talkaboutyourmedicines.org defines polypharmacy specifically as the use of five or more medications. And as I'm saying that, I realize it actually sounds like a lot, but then I remember I mentioned just a little bit ago that an estimated 20% of Americans take five or more prescriptions. So we've learned that polypharmacy can be challenging for patients, but it can also be challenging for their caregivers and even their healthcare providers because it also can cause side effects and drug interactions. On talkaboutyourmedicines.org, we actually have an entire page dedicated to polypharmacy. So please check that out. And you'll also see that we have a page dedicated to pharmacophobia, which is the fear of medication or other pharmacological treatments. So check that out as well. Another question coming in. This is a good one. I think it's going to be applicable to a lot of people. So thank you for asking it. I'm a caregiver for my mom, and keeping her on track with her meds is one of my biggest challenges. Any ideas or suggestions? So yes, actually, and I'm going to talk about a few we have listed on talkaboutyourmedicines.org. First of all, make sure you know what medicines are being taken. Try to go to one pharmacy for all prescriptions and keep a medicine list that has the name of the drug, what it's taken for, the dosage, how often it's taken, and other details you think are important. Be sure to review medicine labels to understand potential side effects or possible drug interaction. And I mentioned this before, but making, make taking medicines part of a daily routine. The example I used before was if a parent always has a morning cup of tea, leave a reminder or the pill bottle by the teacup. You may also consider something called deprescribing with the doctor, which basically means eliminating some of the medications. Review with the doctor, are there medications that are no longer needed? Certainly, eliminating medications, if safe and possible, will go a long way in simplifying drug regimens and helping to keep those you're a caregiver for on track with their meds. But if you go to the tips and questions for caregivers page, you will find these tips included with a bunch of other tips. But you'll also find printable tip sheets including tips for talking to your parents about medication, excuse me, about medications, 10 questions to ask about the medications you take, and you'll even find a PDF about juggling multiple medications. I really hope this helps. So a question coming in is also whether or not we know um, what the percentage of older adults taking five or more meds is. Um, our audience master is our audience member is guessing over 20%. So I, the only statistics that I remember um, is that there, I believe we said that there's 20% of Americans take five or more prescriptions, which is shocking. Um, I'm not on, right now I can't recall some of the other um, statistics cited on talkaboutyourmedicines.org, but I really encourage you to check, check out that website because it will have further specifics than I'm including in today's presentation. But thanks for the question. 
so let's see. Another question coming in is, how do I get rid of medications I don't need anymore? So that's a really important question, and I'm really glad, I'm super glad it was asked because I can actually refer you to two sites that both have tons of information on how to safely and responsibly dispose of unused meds. First, please visit bmedwise.org. Under the Use Medicine Safely tab, you can find a section titled Safe Medicine Storage Disposal. Hopefully, it'll, it'll be able to provide you with the specifics you need. Now, the second website, website I want to point out is safeneedledisposal.org. Now, if you're disposing of needles specifically, this is a great site for that. Disposal rules and regulations vary across states and localities. On this site, you'll be able to click on a state to see the guide, guidance, excuse me, the guidelines or regulations for safely disposing of used sharks in your area. And of course, with any questions, you can also reach out to our call center. Counselors are available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, and we do have Spanish-speaking counselors. So I do like to keep the questions portion of the presentation brief, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up with just those questions. But remember, if I didn't get a chance to answer your question, I will follow up with you by email, or you can always check out our website or reach out to our call center counselors. For now, I want to thank you so much for joining us for today's presentation. We do hope you visit talkaboutyourmedicines.org and help us spread the word about this important healthcare topic, medication adherence. Have a great day.